Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 33. We are um, filming late at night. Sorry about the lighting. Um, it is what it is. Uh, we didn't even do anything today. <laughs> I just wasn't ready earlier. It's Saturday the, I have no idea what day it is, 23rd of March. Um, yeah, and we are, we were home all day. We were hanging out with baby. Um, just like at her nap time when I would normally film, I was like, not ready. I did. I needed to shower. <laughs> I needed to like get my life together and also do a couple of chores. And so, you know, I was being good and I prioritized that, which just means I'll let these videos render overnight and I will edit tomorrow and hopefully get it up sometime on Sunday. So, um, yeah, last week this was up late anyway. So here you are. Um, today I have a beautiful mug with me. I don't know if I've shown you this one before, but this is also like the exact colors of my duotone. And I forgot to use it while I was filming, uh, my, my FO, uh, episode of that one. But, um, maybe that's the inspiration that was in the back of my mind. I have no idea. I got this a million years ago at a, uh, handmade pottery show in Pennsylvania when I was still living at home. And so, Let's see this little iris there. It's very cute. Today I do have tea and I'm drinking some of what we in our knit group call magic tea. <laughs> and only because it's like, um, everybody likes it, even though everybody has pretty different tastes normally in tea. And it's just, it's called Bengal Spice. It's a little celestial seasonings tea. And it is, uh, like, an, it's like an herbal chai and it's delicious. So that's what I'm sipping on. We have an FO, whips, a new cast on, finally, most of my Haley, and some projects to talk about that are gonna like very pending, pending very soon. Um, no acquisitions. I know you guys are floored. <laughs> We, we did take a second. Um, and a lot of books. Okay, so let's dig right in. Let's first talk about what I'm wearing. You guys haven't seen this one in a, a hot minute. I do wear it a lot. Um, quite often, actually. Uh, I have been doing my tracker. I actually kind of can't wait. I'm going to do... So today's the 23rd, which means next week is the 30th. So we're almost at the end of quarter next week. So I think the week after that, the first week of April, I will do a recap of Q1 stats. That'll give me the time to like color in March into my um, flat lay, which I have been coloring in when I finish things. So when yarn is gone or the projects that I started the year with. Um, and how much yarn I've used, how much yarn I have brought in, and only yarn in my house. So even though I did do a couple of pre-orders, that yarn does not count in the tracker yet. Uh, Fun thing, I know I said this last week, is I did my Ever After pre-order with Treehouse. Mine's already coming in the mail this week. I must have been like, I got one skein of a couple of things and two of one. And it must have just been stuff she had already dyed up. I know like certain colors are pre-dyed and also because they have sample pictures and other things. I got lucky. So <laughs> I'm already getting my order. The thing is, three of those skeins are a gift for my mother. And she wants to make something with them. So I'm absolutely not counting that as stash. So that's exciting. Uh, let's just uh, jump into what this is. Sorry, this is um, the book seat, which is a uh, sweater I tested last. Um, sorry, when did I finish this last? I finished it August. I don't think it came out until October if I'm remembering. Um, but this is from Molly Conrad, who is White Owl Crochet Co. She, uh, her name still says, yes, Crochet Co. She has tons of knit patterns. She does do crochet patterns as well. And I really like her. She has a couple of like crochet garments that I really like, uh, accessories that are great crochet. 
I think I found her just because of some crochet patterns, but uh, she's one of the first people I ever tested for and I've always had a good experience. Let's see, she has really long, like she was one of the first that had like really long reasonable test deadline. She's communicative, you know, all the things I like. This is a size five, it's the XL size. I did the full length, the pattern does come with a crop length version also. Um, <laughs> It said, so I used five millimeter needles for the body. The sleeves I used 5.54 and I think that's because I did them on small cirques that were metal and I just pulled a lot tighter and my first part of a sleeve I did, I talked about this on the podcast, was uh, really small and I was like, it, it just made the fabric like pull open like this a lot and you really could see like my skin through it. So I ripped it out, redid it. Uh, no other changes. This pattern has some really fun little details, which I'll just remind you of. And, uh, oh, and I'll tell you what the yarn is. It has these little eyelets at the sleeves and you can peek them at the neckline and they are at the hem. It is made with a single strand of Capretta, which is a Knit Picks Superwash Merino, 80% Merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. And uh drops kid silk in the color black uh the green is i don't think i have it oh i do hemlock heather and let's see i just really wanted this like moody i love it i wear it a, i wear it pretty frequently oh this is why i got distracted because i can't wait to do stats with you and i have been tracking like well, when I'm wearing them to work and stuff. This one makes an appearance like at least every other week-ish. Maybe that's not true. Maybe it's like every third week. I have a lot of sweaters now. <laughs> I still feel sometimes like I want something new to wear, uh, but I have not, you know, I'm not really wearing t-shirts to work or anything right now. So anywho, this is, uh, it's a good one. It's, it's been wearing pretty well. Um, I did notice, so I, I mean, I just noticed this like, I, I think I wore it once this week for work and I am getting a little bit of pill here. It's more noticeable on the side than on, in the underarm. And there's a couple like on the front, but really it's holding up pretty well. Uh, and this is mohair. And I know, you know, some people are really sensitive to mohair. This is probably not the, the softest mohair, but it's one of the cheapest. That's like pretty nice quality uh i'm really interested i've been seeing a lot of patterns of m like japanese style mo style mohair which is like 60 percent mohair 40 percent silk and i would be really interested they it, it creates much more of a sheer um like you can see more of the thread you can see less of the mohair an interesting thing there's some like really fun tops that have uh lily kate has one that has kind of a high neck and a sheer panel in the front but then the rest is regular yarn. Anywho, this is uh, the book seat. Book seat. I really do like wearing it though. It's a very flattering um, circular yoke. Oh, this is a circular yoke. It does have Japanese short rows. I think I said that, which we've talked about many times, but is the same as a German short row. You just execute it slightly differently. Um, and... I think I, I don't like how long this is. I would have made it a little bit shorter. I just went to pattern measurements and I did block it a little bit long, um, like trying to get to pattern measurements. And it's just, I have a long torso, so I never really say that, but it just does feel like it doesn't need to be quite so long. But yeah, I still wear it a lot. And so there you go. That's my, now that I've had this for more than eight months, do I like it? Yes. The answer is yes. So let's talk about my finished object. Okay. I, I got a lot of knitting done this week. I don't know why we did not have a knit night. I did not dedicate an entire, you know, like knit night was so great about it for me, not just getting together with friends and doing whatever. And sometimes I do have to drive somewhere, but I don't normally get to start knitting until eight o'clock at night. Um, I do, let's be clear. We've talked about this before, but I haven't said it in a while. Like I knit at my desk. I have a job in operations at a company where some weeks, not all the time, some weeks I'm in meetings for like 20 hours a week. 
I sometimes have to take notes in those, but a lot of times I'm just a participant. And in order to not get Slack distracted or email distracted, I knit. It's way better for my engagement to stay focused on a call, especially if I have something that's like just stuck enough that I can work on. I know this is like preaching to the choir here, but you know, if you need to have a conversation with your your coworkers, you know, there is definitely I've I've told people um you know, like if I ever look down, I'm knitting, I'm not texting, <laughs> which I know what you guys are doing is you're texting, you know. Um but if I have a busy week and I'm doing lots of stuff and I don't have time to knit at my desk, I really don't knit until eight o'clock at night when baby goes to bed. Sometimes I can sneak a row or two in if she's like being real independent or Mike takes her and does something. But um, I get to be a mom at the end of the, my work day and that usually involves dinner and like lots of other things and, and some chores. And so, yeah, I just knit at night. But this week, I don't know what it was. I just... I had a lot of meetings like I was in more than more than 20 hours a week this week of meetings just so many um and I also have been um just like I don't know I stayed focused on like less social media like when I do sit down on the couch sometimes I get sucked into Instagram for like 30 or 45 minutes and I just did not do that this week I was like I got I got to make some progress on these projects. Just, I just felt like I knit a lot. Okay. And we did not do knit, knit night this week because we just had did a hangout weekend and which is fine. I think, you know, everybody needed to like be with their partners and their real life, their animals, their whatever. Um, but I did finish this. Oh, uh, I did not block it because it's a baby blanket and it's acrylic and I'm not going to do that. Uh, so it is done. When I finished it, it was done. Um, you know, so those last ends in. And this is... Oh my God, it's so cute. <laughs> it's the baby sea turtle baby blanket. Do you love it or what? How cute are these little sea turtles? I'll get you a little close up. They're adorable. They're adorable little turtle turtles. Um, And there is a one fun starfish over here just hanging out on the beach. Um, this is a baby blanket for a good friend of mine who is having baby number two, um, in a matter of, I think June, I think June. Um, but she is coming into town on Monday. So I wanted to get done this done. And so I will be able to hand it straight off to her. And I'm glad I got to show you guys the finished product. It's very adorable. I'm a fan of how it worked up. I'm going to give you this side view so you can see like all of the stripes. Um, so like I said, when we were talking about this, the waves are just, you know, it's just a little chevron-y um, ripple blanket. Uh, but she does give you, sorry, this is by Mandy Hoos Seth, who is made by Mandy86, I think on Instagram. Um, her blog is just made by Mandy. This is a free pattern on her blog and she gives you like the colors and then, you know, four in this color, you know, one in this, then, you know, like whatever the, the pattern repeat is. I mostly followed that. I ran out of this color and then I also ran out of my darker tan, which I figured this is the wet sand and then this is the light sand. So I just added one at the end. Um, but all of the water ripples, when the color changed, I knit through the back loop or the front loop, depending on which row I was on. Um, the front loop knit through doesn't really do the same effect, but I didn't want to have the ripples on the backside. So anywho, that's what it looks like. I'm very pleased. Let's do this view where you can see these turtles. It's so cute. Um, ah, I'm happy. I think they came, it came out really nicely and it's like, it's done. <laughs> it's what she wanted. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if she's even going to have like an undersea thing, but she does love like beachy things. So this is a great for her. Um, and they are a little bit three dimensional. They're sewn on pretty good though. So they're not going to go anywhere, even if baby pulls at it. Um, I know how I ended up using the baby blanket that I bought for Theo and that was like really just her stroller blanket so it didn't get that much wear and tear but there's one finished object for the week I don't have another um 
Oh, you know, I don't think I brought it down. I am in the middle of a spin. I'm just going to say this at the very front because I didn't, I forgot to bring it down, but I am doing that blended gray brown merino I showed you a few weeks ago. I've got one bobbin totally done and I pulled it off meaning to bring it down, but I think I just threw it on the couch and I forgot. Um, it's looking really good though. And so we'll see what it looks like when it's all applied. I imagine this week I'm not going to apply it together. I'm a little bit far behind on spinning, but, um, that's okay. There's not a hard, hard deadline for things. Um, and I, I just, I did some other things. Oh, that's the other thing I'm going to talk about is if, did you notice there's a little bit of a change behind me and I really like it. And I'm going to talk through what I did in a minute, uh, at the end of whips. So, um, yes, let's go through projects. First project to show you is something I picked up and I put a lot of work in. This is now my oldest whip and it was a cast on February 1st. We did it February 1st. This is the Instant Crush by Hohi Locatelli. And I am not done, but I am getting there. Uh, this let's do details first. Okay. So this is the top down color work, two strands of fluff held together sweater, and it is a raglan. I am making size F, which is the sixth size. Uh, it is 40. I have it up here. Hold on. I didn't actually, you know, I, I will do two for my, um, the baby blanket. I didn't do any measurements yet. I didn't take pictures. Even though I finished this like on Wednesday, I need to take some pictures in good light somewhere. I always find it so challenging to take baby blanket pictures. I guess I have a crib now I could do it against, but the, the baby's crib, there's like a, the background is very busy because she's right against wallpapered wall. I just like, you can't see it if you drape it over a chair, especially something like this, which is a whole scene. Laying on the floor, I feel like is weird. Anyway, I'm gonna have to take pictures for Ravelry and I will take some measurements then, but it is a crib size blanket made out of various worsted yarns. Okay, this one, however, is so much more. So uh, this is, sorry, 47 and a quarter inch bust with a zero recommended, like zero inches of recommended ease. This is the closest to my bust measurement. Uh, it is, I am using four millimeter needles three for the ribbing, which is true. And Surrey Lace from Backloop Yarn Curl, all of it. Um, and that is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk, 328 yards for 50 grams. And the colors are Frost. This blue is Nordic. The speckle is called Tia Beanie. And then the gold is called Goldenrod. And I'm in love with it. I think it's so fun. It's so cute. It's cute on. And I don't have very much left to go. I did finish both sleeves. Can you even believe it? Okay, here's my progress marker. I have a cute little flower progress marker from Hello Lavender. Uh, and this is where I was last week on the first sleeve. So I had picked up the sleeve and done, you know, I don't know, 15 rows or something. And then I finished it. And then I said, keep going, lady. And I just picked this one up right away and finished it also today. Uh, that's why I feel so accomplished this week. I think I just like knit a lot of sleeves. <laughs> it's like, these also are, I don't need, I don't know, straight sleeves, bishop sleeves, whatever. There's no um, decreases until you get to the cuff and then the cuff has like a knit one knit two together and then a ribbing situation. This is very cute. Where I am on the body though, as comparison is I just finished this little, whatever you're going to call this pattern here. Um, and so I, you know, I think the sleeves may end up being a little bit longer than the body. I marked it out. I don't even remember. I mean, I can make it as long as I want essentially. 
I have a pretty long torso and I'm not very tall. So I think my sleeves and my body end up usually being pretty close to each other if you like lay it flat. So I may just, you know, well, I should probably try it on. I could try it on for you right now, actually, because I have a, actually have a barber cord in here. So pause one second. Movie magic. Just like that. Now I'm back. Um, and it's on and it fits so nice. Okay, I'm gonna stand up and scooch my chair so we can see where I am. Um, I'm here. These are high-waisted pants. It's close to being the top of them. I definitely would add, you know, I've got a couple inches of ribbing to do, but I'm gonna probably add about this much before I get to the ribbing, two-ish inches. So yeah, maybe not quite to the chart of the sleeves. Sleeves are fitting nice. I know this will grow a little bit, probably not a ton, and I'm okay with them being where they are. I think that that is a good length. Okay, that's fun. Isn't she cute? It's such a fun color. It's just like so crazy. Here I am again. Uh, so that was fun. <laughs> I really am enjoying the process of making this one. Um, this is my knit along. I've been doing a terrible job uh, interacting with. I just I told you guys I'm not a great group chatter. I tend to look at group chats and then I don't always weigh in a lot. But I will be sending a chat tonight uh, with a little pic. There are a couple people who are done. Charlotte's done. I think she finished first. She just like ripped through it so fast. Uh, she and I will definitely take some pictures together, and I'm that's exciting. But the deadline, which was not a hard deadline, there's not going to be prizes or anything, um, was the 31st, which is next Sunday. So I will be done with it before then. I'll be done with it before next week. I mean, I don't only, I only have a couple inches in the body and then the ribbing to do. I want it to be off my needles also because it's been long enough. Two months feels like enough time. We are gonna go in cast on order. So the next thing is the clay sweater. I have to dig this out of the bag. Uh, this is my clay sweater by Haley Smedley, who is Ozetta. I also did good work on this one this week. I have this one just shoved in the bottom. It's not connected to any yarn right now. In the bottom of my gigantic flock bag, which I still just always have with me 100% of the time. Uh, this is a gift knit for my sister-in-law, Caressa, and she is, I'm making her a size five, which is 50 and a half, 51 and a half inches. Recommended ease is 10 to 12 inches. Yeah, size large. Five millimeter needles, 4.5 for the collar, which is all that's recommended in the pattern, but I did do that for the cuff as well. And then this is also Back Loop Yarn Co. Yarn, and this is her... Um, basic DK, which is 100% superwash merino, 231 yards for 100 grams. And the color is flamingo, which is like, you could see this from outer space pink. That's what it is. Uh, I am done the sleeves on this also. I don't think I left the marker in. I think I took it out for something. Anyway, um, I had one sleeve done. I think I just had one sleeve done and then the other was not picked up or anything last week. So I did a sleeve. I didn't do any body rows. I just disconnected the sleeve like yesterday. And so I need to pick the body back up, but I'm pretty close to being done the body on this one too. I did quite a lot before I got there. I mean, it's, it's like six inches and this is a slightly over just like oversized generally I think that it's not like it's not cropped um in Ozetta's pictures I don't think no so but I think Caressa's like she's pretty short <laughs> I have a measurement somewhere that's like roughly this I measured a sweatshirt that she really likes the fit of um roughly whatever the, the body length is so uh we shall see the, but it's it's going great. I mean, this is a drop shoulder, top down. I could also try this one on for you guys. Do you want me to do it? Uh, no, because the body is on is on actual needles. Um, I will 
maybe finish this awesomeness this week maybe not but I'm not, I'm not there's not a priority to do it I do want to cast on my next gift knit though because that yarn is here and I'm excited to do it and like do you see this is like changing the color of my face um but this is a size I would make for myself and I'm contemplating it though the pearl rows have not been super fun I really like the texture it's super it's super fun um what I think I would do though is because it's it's the superwash yarn at this gauge is like a ton of stretch. I think what I would prefer is something a little bit more structured. Like I've been dreaming of making something in Calborn Woolen's Scout and that's a DK weight. And I feel like it would be perfect for this. Uh, I don't have any. Why would I make something with yarn I have? Um, but actually I could also do this. Like I don't think this hasn't been taking a ton of yarn. Oh, I moved it up here. I have... Um, a couple of, actually I might have enough of this color. Um, I have some 220 Cascade, uh, 220 non-superwash yarn that would be really lovely for this also. So that could be, I might have some purple and some blue. That could be, who knows? No one knows what I'm going to do. It's a total surprise, even to me. So this is the clay sweater. It's, it's moving right along. Uh, I, it's, it's like a joyful thing to knit on, not only because it's a gift knit and I know she's going to really love it, but also because it's just like, it's like a wake up color. You're like, well, every time I pull it out, I'm like, oh my God. Uh, okay. The, the, now I teased this, but we really are going to talk about it now is my Skyline Tea. So this is the Skyline Tea, which is in testing. Sorry, I have like mohair on my face. Um, for Tori Yu, who is Tori Knits NYC, uh, I have tested for Tori a few times and every time I've loved it, she's, I think she just writes good patterns. Um, that's what I have to say about it. This is a top down saddle shoulder t-shirt. It is the fingering weight version and t-shirt version of the Skyline pullover, which I tested for her in the fall. I love that sweater, even though it's made out of the worst yarn and it's so crunchy and kind of uncomfortable. And I still really hate that yarn. I do love that sweater. One day I will just re-knit it in the yarn I like, and then I will throw that sweater in the trash because nobody wants it. It's the worst yarn. So this test is due April 11th. I think the testing timeline was something like six and a half weeks, which is not a ton of time for largest sizes for t-shirts. So I think this generally speaking has like, it's just a fingering weight, even the largest size. I mean, I feel like a lot of people who would be signing up for testness would have something on hand for this. I did just use something in stash, but it's also, um, yeah, I mean, at the gauge and stuff, like it just doesn't feel super crazy to get through. I guess what I'm, I mean, I don't know. Um, I know like Autumn Goodman has been doing the, all the hard work, all the good work to get test, uh, designers to create longer timelines. Maybe this one was like eight weeks. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like t-shirts, I think for most sweaters, eight weeks is like the very bare minimum for t-shirts. Like sleeves do take a lot of time to knit. So, uh, this one doesn't have any sleeve shaping either. So once you pick up your sleeve stitches, you just, you just knit them. Um, I don't know how I feel about that to be frank. And I need to go back and look at the pullover. I want to say that's probably also how those were, that was, uh, it is a drop shoulder, I'm also at a place where I could try this one on for you, but I don't have, this is not on Barber Cords either, and I, I don't want to mess with that, but uh, let's do details, and then I'll talk to you a little bit about this. This is a size 5, 50 inches. The recommended ease is 4 to 6 inches. I decided not to go up an extra size, even though, I mean, some days my best is 47, Who or in most days, sometimes it's 46. I don't know. You know, being 47, it's literally like, this is the same as so many patterns where it says like 44 to 46 and then 48 to 50 or whatever is like the size ranges that you would for, you know correspond to your actual best size to the, the pattern. 47 just is right in the middle. So it's kind of like you're, if you're a nine and a half shoe size, you have to pick just a nine or a 10 sometimes. <laughs> this is life. Um, okay. I am using 3.25 millimeter needles for the body. I am using, I did use a three for the saddles alone because 
we talked about that last week. You can go back and listen to my crazy ramble about it. Uh, I'm using Grenrico 8515 sock, uh, which is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards, 400 grams, and the color Three Sisters. This is uh, like uh, available on the website, so you can get it if you want to just match me or you really like this color. I really enjoy it. It's almost like a little bit of a a like a robin's egg blue like it's got like the little bit brown speckles in it kind of like a robin's egg has and that's very cute and I like it uh I don't like warm things normally but I do really like this color I think it's pretty flattering so uh what did I do this week so much oh you guys so much I held it up like you've seen this before no last week I had the back done and I had some of the front just to hear yes you may admire my beautiful flock stitch marker from hello lavender from last year um anyway so I was to hear on the front panel the sleeves are not connected to all the way down here so I kicked the I kicked butt getting this done and then I connected it and then I just zoomed through like six inches almost of body desk project. This was my desk project for the week. And I just really like, I think starting like Tuesday, um, I think most of Sunday evening, I just spent getting the front done. I, I mean, this had the deadline is August or sorry, August is April 11th. That's not very far from now. I want to be able to take pictures, wash it, dry it, do all of the nice things, give notes, make sure I really like the fit of every piece um, so I can give that feedback to Tori too. And uh, in order to do that, I need to get it done ASAP. I will be done with this. Like it's not going to take me a whole lot longer. I don't need a ton of inches for the body um, like left and then picking up the sleeves again I'm pretty sure I just read through the sleeves and I can't remember now but I'm pretty sure it doesn't say anything about short rows which I feel like vaguely worried about that if that's the case because yes it's a drop shoulder but and that's sort of a look to have like it'll be more like a true t-shirt kind of sleeves then because they sometimes are like that like they're they're not you know it doesn't give you a whole cap I'm going to look at the google doc and see if anyone has put any feedback in on sleeve fit yet uh, this I'm not the only one test setting this by the way I um I feel like this is a test knit with friends because <laughs> There are so many of us doing this. So Ariel is testing this. Um, and then some of the San Francisco group that we, that I just finished my come down Cardi that we, we knit together, uh, are doing this. I think three of them. So two, at least two. So that's very fun. <laughs> knit with friends, test with friends. Uh, but I'm going to see, maybe I'll, maybe I'll like, I think Serena's a little further than me. I'll just like um see what she thought about the sleeves and the fit for her she is small smaller than me for sure but I mean I still think that's you know like if you have shoulders <laughs> you can tell me how you like the fit of the sleeves yes so I have a box I have a pretty done box that's pretty good I mean yes obviously I still need to add inches but I think I only need like I don't I don't know if this is kind of cropped again this one did not have any pictures on Tori, I do feel like sometimes her body measurements are a little bit short because she's a little bit short um, and does tend to, I think, pick slightly more cropped silhouettes, which is fine. That's always something that you can adjust. I'm going to knit to what she says, then figure out how, I mean, and it, she, her patterns always say, or until whatever, but I want to weigh yarn at that piece with having the sleeves done probably so I can give her a good estimate of what it would have been and then add on whatever length I need just so she can like rightly or wrongly see, you know I it's good for the yard the yardage estimates anywho here we are skyline tea I'm excited to get this in the wardrobe I think this will be like a hardware I think I'll, I'll wear this quite a lot because I think it's going to be easy to put on with like, this would go well with dark jeans. It would go well with black jeans. It would go well with, I don't really wear shorts that much, but like all the other things I wear, <laughs> that's about the sum of it when I leave the house. Okay. Um, I also have this 
I don't show, I don't have that many cute project bags. We've talked about this, but this is one that I think is very cute and also fond. So at Flock last year, there was a community indigo dye vat and the girls got tickets to it. And I ended up showing up on Saturday, even though I didn't know if I was going to. And so I dyed my project bag in the indigo vat. And so I have some, you just, it's like tie dyeing. You just do little scrunchies and um it also has the squiggly sheep on it so it's very fun it's fond memories it was kind of a cool thing to do so let's see oh i have one last thing so i have another test knit and i have another test knit coming i said i was not gonna have a year of test knits but this test knit is for Iris, which I knew like even going into 2024, I was going to do this specific test knit because she had been teasing this sweater for like months before she called, did the test call and I knew I wanted to make it. I am doing a test, a secret test for Bridget also, our friend who was just here visiting last week. I... I, I, that's also, I don't, it doesn't count. That's just like, that's helping a friend out. Um, slash it's a really cute thing and I got to see it. Like it's a secret. So I also don't know how I'm going to, I'll film as I go maybe and just like put it all together for you at the end. But, uh, let's see here. I cast on my Haley. Finally. So this is the Haley sweater by Iris H, who is Iris Makes on Instagram. I am making size E, which is 48 inches. The recommended ease is one to four positive inches. This is one for me, so that's great. I am using four millimeter needles. I did get gauge with four millimeter needles I for the body, so I didn't even look at the ribbing needle yet. Uh, this is Cascade BFL in the color red 09. It looks matches my lipstick actually pretty well. It is a hundred percent, uh, blue faced Lester wool and it is 262 yards for hundred grams. So it's slightly lighter DK. Look at that. It's good. That's a good color. This is the front. Not that I really need it because the back doesn't look like anything. <laughs> this is the back panel. Uh, yeah, it looks a little bit small, but also I'll be casting on some stitches. This is where I do the pickup. This does have, I think, more of an inset sleeve. Like, it is going to go here on my shoulder. So that's actually pretty appropriate. In size, I read through the pattern. I'm super ready for it. I, um, you can see this. I don't, I actually really like how the fabric looked in the swatch when it was washed. This blooms a little bit. Is this going to like focus ever? Hold on. There we go. Um, it does bloom a little bit. I'm not going to, I'm not going to need to stretch it very much for, uh, for blocking. Like I think it's going to be very true to size. I'm not going to have to like do any kind of really manipulation. The cables will open up a little bit. They did in, um, in blocking the swatch. But they are also just, uh, like the fabric feels light and pretty drapey for being like 100% wool. It, it just feels like a little bit bouncy, which I did, you know, notice when I spun some BFL that it was bouncier than I thought it would be. So I like that. It's not going to be super dense. It's going to be my Christmas sweater, but also I'm going to be inside when I'm wearing it. So I don't want to be like dying of heat. So I think this is going to be perfect. Um, I did just notice this and this is probably not a big deal. And I, I don't think I noticed it in the swatch as much, but one of my, um, oh, no, it's fine. One of my slanted, like you, you could do the diamond. It just has like a weird the stitches, like a little strange. It's fine. <laughs> It'll block out. Uh, oh my, but I'm kind of obsessed. That's really fun. I'll definitely be wearing this lipstick when I wear this finished object in about a million years. So there we go, friends. Those are all my whips. Let's talk a little bit about come upcoming projects. And then we'll talk about books. And then uh, we will wrap up. Okay. 
I know I still have to talk about free accessory patterns on Ravelry, but it's not going to be this week. So, because I want to talk about what I did to rearrange also, but I'll do that at the very end. So I have a couple of cast on things. One is that this is not, is this the most recent? Yeah, I guess this is my most recent finished yarn. No, other than the merino. I did the merino too. The merino's down here. Um, but I may do a traveler shawl with that. But I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm, I'm not rushing. I really want to knit with this. I want this to be a Sophie shawl. And so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold it with the other skein of this or one skein. Held up. I'll probably hold it with the other skein because that will make it more even. Because no one can tell. I... I promise you it's not that even even between the two skeins so um but it's the first time I'm gonna knit with my hand spun I'm very excited about it I'm gonna cast it on this week because I just need to get it done yes it's gonna be too warm for it anyway but I don't care I just want to have it I want to have it done I want to knit with it I want to see what the experience is like actually knitting with some hand spun this is a relatively under spun and under plied uh also, this is Rambouillet. It's super soft though and so bouncy and I just want to have it. There have been a couple of people I follow on Instagram who have also started spinning recently or recently-ish and have been making Sophie shawls with some of their first, you know, like two quantities of a color uh, spins and I think that is inspiring me. Obviously, I'm totally being influenced, but it was, it was a thought I had before too because I do think I knew I wanted to hold it double and Sophie shawls are not dependent on how much yarn you have because you just weigh it. You knit. You you weigh when you're about halfway or you think you're halfway and then you just decrease. And so how great. It'll be my first Sophie shawl and it'll be my first hand spun knit. So I'm going to get that done. I'm definitely going to get a cast on this week. I also don't really have anything kind of small, mindless, and at least for the beginning part, travelable. Uh... I may also, I've been really craving socks. I don't know why. I think also for travel things, I'm gonna, uh, Mike has a, an appointment this week that I have to take him to at the um, doctor. And so I am gonna need like a sit and wait project. And I don't know that I want to take a giant sweater with me though. That would be kind of hilarious. Like be in the waiting room with like my iPad with, cause I need to cross out the rows for like the cable thing or like all of the colors. <laughs> I won't be that person. I will be a small con contained project person. So let's talk about books and then yarn. I love talking about yarn, obviously. Uh, books, books, books. So I read so much. Okay, last week, actually, I forgot to tell you about a book that I was th had started reading, but I wasn't that far into it. And I just I totally forgot. Before I get there, though, because this is the whole last part of my week. Uh, I started A Clockwork Angel, which is the first in the Infernal Devices trilogy by Cassandra Clare. Publication order, this is the next book. I think that this and the four, five, and six of Mortal Instruments get like kind of publication is maybe like one, one, one. Um, I read a couple of blogs and yes, publication order is good, but also I think I might just do like a lot of people said you can read Mortal Instruments one through three infernal devices and then mortal instruments four to six and then the others and like it would be good for reading order so i think that's what i'm gonna do i started that i am not very far into it it's good so far i could i mean i'm very not far into it so i don't know what's going on really i am still i've been giving some time to lord of chaos which is the sixth book of wheel of time because you know i gotta keep you gotta keep a certain amount of hours a week to just stay in it. It's things are happening right now, though. There was a lot of the beginning of this book. I've said this before, but like, sometimes the book will just start. I mean, the very start of this book was with characters. I was like, who the heck are we? <laughs> We're in book six. And who the heck is this? Uh, that's just how it started. You just drop into like a crazy scenario. There is a lot more new character, like, bad guy perspective happening in the beginning of this book which is interesting but they keep referring to like historical events and other things that because I'm audio listening to them relatively fast not super fast 
I just, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, it's fine. I don't, I don't think those things matter as much. Uh, and maybe they do, but also I'm not going to be the person who reads this like they're in class and like takes notes of every event and how people are connected because there's so much. This world is too big. I am okay getting the rough idea. That's fine for me. That's how I'm choosing to read it. So let's see. I also am still, um, well, I, I had just started this last week, but I am Kindle reading some of the crowns of Nyaxia. That's what the series is called. The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I've gotten a decent way through it. And this is a cray. It's, it's nuts. It's like, it's vampires. Um, but like in a, they have too much power kind of world, uh, which is interesting and like dark, very dark. And that's also by Chris Broadman. And she, yeah, I think she, she plays with kind of heavy themes. And so, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Bridge Kingdom. So I read all four of the books that are out and I don't know if this is going to be it. I feel like there's definitely other characters that totally could have other books. So, okay. Sorry. So my, my phone died and I forgot to plug it in when I was filming. That's fine. I, okay. Uh, Brig Bridge Kingdom. So the first in the series is called Bridge Kingdom. Um, the series is by Danielle L. Jensen. Uh, this, this came out the first one in 2018. So, you know, it's not super recent though. I think the fourth one, which is, I may have read four of them this week, I think was just last year. So it, there's potential. I, I'm not sure. And I didn't really look into it. There's definitely characters that have more things going on and they leave it in a place that like, there's still a lot of things going on in this universe that like, you could totally have more books. So, this is about really, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but basically there are some crooked, egomaniacal monarchs in this little universe that use everyone around them. That's like the main premise of the entire series, but essentially, uh, there is like the main characters of this is Lara and Aaron and Lara is a princess from one kingdom who gets raised with her sisters in isolation essentially to become assassins like assassin queen potential queens so they can one of them can be chosen to marry into the alliance with the bridge kingdom which is is like a neighboring kingdom um that has a bridge. It's not what the, some of the kingdom is called, but that's what they're known as. Uh, Ithacana is the kingdom. So they can, but this bridge like is the safest route to connect two continents, I think. And so, but it's really long and otherwise you can get like sucked into this sea where there's a lot of like, uh, tempests. <laughs> That's what they call them all the time. Uh, but a lot of tropical storms or whatever that would, that, you know, ships get lost at sea then. And so in order to like trade between continents, you use the bridge. Okay. And they tax on the bridge. Cause I was like, at, at one point I was like, what's the use of this? But yeah, they like tax goods going through the bridge. And so that, this kingdom makes money anyway. Obviously there's like a lot of subterfuge and there's like, some brainwashing happening. There's like a lot of things going on. Uh, it's good. There's nothing you don't see coming necessarily, but I really like, there's a lot of character growth. There's a lot of like, um, just like learning about the world from this character that really grew up in isolation, but like she's so intelligent, but also like has no idea <laughs> about a lot of things. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, the second book is called The Traitor Queen. And that one is also about this couple. So it's kind of like a duology duology. So uh, The Traitor Queen is still about Lara and Aaron and uh you guessed it, something bad had happened in the first one. <laughs> She's now known as the traitor queen. I won't tell you what, uh, but it's her trying to make amends and they like start involving a lot of the other 
major players in that. It's also really good. There are just some things you're like, that is so effed up <laughs> that go on. Uh, yeah. But the, th the third book is, oh, look, it does say on Goodreads, actually, there's five and six. So one coming out this year. And I, th I think I know who that's going to be. But the third book is uh, called The Inadequate Heir. And it is about Lara's older brother, who is the heir apparent of their kingdom. And he is reluctant and also in his people father's eyes whatever inadequate he's a bookworm and this is a warrior kind of nation and he wants peace uh they have something they call the endless war which sounds terrible and when you want peace and you are the king sounds a little bit hard uh but he does of course by accident meet and learns a lot about and they can kind of conspire together before knowing who each other are uh the idea of peace between the two warring nations um and the, they're called Meridrina and uh Valcada are the nations but he unknowingly spends time with the heir apparent of that other nation and they obviously you know have all this good lovely tension and also um this like dream for peace in what they think is an insurmountable situation the set the fourth book is also about them so it's like duology duology this one is called the endless war and that is uh about them finding a way to end the war. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a concept. Uh, but it's really good. I also, there were some surprises in here that I actually was like, what? Um, I mean, just things you couldn't have known. At one point she gets sent to prison be because her aunt finds out that she like is in love with this guy and you know, it's like a whole thing. And, um, some very clever things happen, but also the, um, the thing about like I I felt like the character was it, just maybe being a little bit dumb like the girl in the oh just you know there's no possible way for us to be together and I was like but isn't there <laughs> so I wasn't super super surprised at the end but I really liked it uh this is this is uh th these characters are Karis and, La and Zara and I don't uh I don't know who I liked better I think I I think I like Lara and Aaron better but like some of their strife I think is stupider so I don't know uh, we'll see who, uh, five and six are, but I think it's going to be Aaron's sister. That's my guess. And an unknown guy. Cause she is supposed to be married off to a different kingdom. I would just not like my power of decision to be taken from me on that front because it is a huge part of your life when you are married. Anywho, uh, those are books. That's all I have to talk about this week for books, even though that's kind of a lot. Sorry that I don't normally talk about them that much, but I didn't, don't really finish for books. They're not, they weren't super long and I listened to them at maximum speed and I just, yeah, but I, I, I like really wanted to know what was going to happen. So even though they were not the best books I've ever read, they were definitely very fun in the romantic world of books. And that was a recommendation from BookTube and I thought it was good. I mean, it's a great recommendation. Definitely a good series to read if you're okay reading something that is not complete. Okay, let's move on to what I did for yarn. So as you can see, I made some changes. I will put up a picture now for you of let me scoot to the side so I can just do this in the picture a before and an after I did not do a ton of different things but I did remove a couple of things and I rearranged so 
I will talk through the rearrangement really fast now that the pictures are gone. So before I had my DK yarn was hidden one shelf above and you couldn't see it in the view. Some of this was just for this view, but also uh, in my mind, like this order works better in my mind too for just like what I'm looking for. So at the very top, I moved my bins that I didn't like down here at the very top. I um, I will put up another picture in a second of the other side of the room that I adjusted, but I put the bins up at the top because I don't go into them that often. I'm not all, all the time looking for scraps or whatever. I do add to them pretty frequently, but uh, I put worsted at the top, then DK. That's all my DK here. This is all fingering. This is all lace weight. Well, fluffy, mostly lace weight. Uh, and then my very bulky is at the bottom just because those are closest like to the dog hair and other things and they I didn't move them and they were all fine. Um, I did adjust the middle shelf a little bit and put my bulkies down at the bottom there because those were at the very top and just like didn't make logical sense to me. So at the very top, I also in the middle here, I do have like this, uh, which you can't see, but in the if you saw it in the picture, this is um, a... a one bulky sweater quantity I have that's in the middle bin but then in the middle I have you guys how beautiful do were you staring at these while I was talking because I was they're so beautiful this is all fiber um these are all very pretty braids I have a fiber uh a couple of things that are matching a couple of things that are not but are close and then I have this I don't think I moved maybe I moved it down one um this is fingering weight did I move this down? I did. I must have moved this. Yeah, I just like moved all of these. I, I rearranged all three of these um, on each side. But then this is my fingering weight. So in line with the fingering weight yarn here. And then I have a fluff down here, which is actually there. It's all bulky fluff um, from Wool and the Gang that I got from a D-Sash while ago. I actually have an idea of what I want to make with that. And I will maybe eventually make it. Okay. And then on the right here is my all my spun skeins. And... Uh, bagged fiber. I don't, not all of my fiber is over here, but this is all stuff that's like braids or bats that are like pretty well contained. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing to have here over on the side, but um, I mean, it's beautiful to look at and the camera is like just a little bit shiny or whatever, but I wanted a place where my hand spun could like dedicated no matter the weight just be so I, I know where it is. And yeah, so same thing on the other side. And uh, but I do have all my, all, all my lace weight here, which is, uh, nice to have. It was up at the top and it was pretty spread out. Uh, I definitely don't, it's not the thing I have the most of, but it, it all fits here with space. Like there's, there's like room for me to grab in easily. Yeah, I really like it. I didn't change much around the color order. I kind of tried to keep them sort of how they were though. What I did do is I moved like because my DK did not have a ton. Oh, and I did combine. So I do have some sport weight inside of the DK on both sides because I got rid of that middle bin, uh, which is fine to me. I know what those are. I don't have as much sport weight as anything else. Okay, now let me put up another picture. This was the uh, fiber shelf before, which also had some random other things on it. And this is it now here. Um. I did a lot on this front just because I got those bags and I will show one of them to you right now. But these bags are just from Amazon, whatever. Um, but I saw them on Knit California's podcast and I was like, oh, these are nice because they're clear. So I can see what's in there. It's not going to go into like a deep, dark vortex of nothing, but it's an easier way to put kind of like oddly shaped things with, and these shelves that I have also are like set. I can't move them up or down. So I can't move the shelf up to put two of my stacking plastic bins or something there so it's just like a waste of it was a waste of space and I didn't I want to like free stack as much because there's no back to them or anything so here is one um and they are all visible in the picture but essentially I just have those and then a couple uh my new to den is now over there and a couple of fiber extras that are sort of like the less organized ones uh but they just also didn't you know they didn't fit where I was looking okay so here it is it's very cute and it's very shiny um this ha and I did kind of try to keep them pretty logical so I'd easily be able to find what I need so uh 
yeah and I, I mean i i know what's in them plus i can see it really easily but like this is a big giant sweater quantity that was on the shelf and also i don't like mixing like i said this before it would just i don't you know this is this is partly just a beautiful art display for me right so i want it to look nice it's not just functional um and like I just didn't like where these were I want to actually make something with them this year but uh there are so many of them so I layered them in here I also um put in more of this like these are DK weight and more of this stuff is like sport and DK in here so like I have another sweater quantity over here of Lima um and then a couple of like random skeins but like here's some like show pool, pool balls and yeah and it's a good size. They're not very heavy. They're easy to move. They're not that big, um, like overwhelmingly. So even though this is pretty stuffed, like I, I couldn't really fit much more in here. It's not like I don't, I, I'm not going to find it hard to like lift it off to pull anything out that I need to. Uh, they only zip across the top though. So they don't like open all the way, which is nice because things don't fall out of it. But also you do have to kind of pull more things out to get what you need what it did allow me is to clear out a couple of my plastic bins I think I took three uh three out in total because I had a couple on the top that had sort of bulky weight um scraps in them or like large ball scraps but were still not quite a full skein and so they weren't in like the full skein bins I not only have one of the cubbies that has some full skeins of yarn in it that are caked um which is fine. And I, yeah, it's, it's better. It's better for now. We'll see. I feel like I have the license to change this as much as I want. It does feel like kind of a project, so I'm not going to do it all the time. I'm really happy with how this looks now. I think everything looks gorgeous. Uh, just also getting to touch and play a little bit. I did, you know, rearrange a couple of the colors because I got to put like my sport of this pink in here. There's just a lot of pink and blue right here. And this makes me so happy. <laughs> uh I'm very pleased and that was an adventure I also undertook on actually I did I did a lot of it on Sunday afternoon and I finished like one thing Monday morning before work uh just to get uh, some of the the bins and like tote things um out of the way and that felt exciting and nice and getting to work in sort of like a refresh space this week. I was on a meeting Monday at like 10 a.m. And a girl who I'm, I'm on meetings with her every day of the week, pretty much. She commented, uh, someone asked how my weekend was. I was like, oh, I just did a little yarn rearranging. She was like, I knew it. She's like, you have more blue right behind your head. And I was like, I do. <laughs> so there's that. Super fun. And... Yeah, I think I don't have tons more to talk about this week. There are more make 12 projects I want to get on my needles. Here's my plans, folks. I am going to cast on my Sophie Shaw because I need something travel. Maybe a sock, maybe not a sock. I've not really decided. Uh, I feel, here's the thing about socks is I miss knitting socks, but I feel relatively full on the sock front in my sock drawer and I'm wearing them a lot but like I'm not getting them worn through. I think I'd like to make a couple that fit a little bit better because I, I think I'm a, like, they feel okay when I first put them on, but as they wear, they're wearing like, like I need to put them in the dryer, you know, some of them, um, just to like seize them back up. I do think like potentially that means I should just go down a needle size, keep the same everything else. Um, just because I think it's, it's more like the density of the stitches. It's not how many stitches there are. So I might try that with like a pair of, uh, I just want to do a pair of self-striping socks. That's really what I want to do. That's why I'm craving some easy, no thinking stripes, but I do feel relatively full. Sorry. Another fuzzy, um, on the sock front. So maybe I'm just going to keep working through some of these t-shirts and that's okay. I will cast on very shortly Lauren's Daydreamer. I will, I think I'm going to do that before my mom's come or a uh, field day cardigan, partly because I just need a tiny break from cardigans. Though I'm craving putting one on the needles for me. I just, there's so many things I want to make. Okay. I do think from my make 12, I don't have cardigans on there. 
I don't think I have any cardigans on there. I'd have to look at it again. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I, I want to get at least another one of those cast on in the very near future. And it might be a t-shirt, but I think it might actually be one of my sweaters so I can just get out of the way and have it before next fall, because I do think I'll fall into this whole, whole of t-shirts this summer and make several more and not to have new fresh things for the fall. And I'm already feeling because I've been wearing sweaters to work every day that I could do with a couple more options. Uh, yeah. And not always be wearing the same thing over and over. I don't know. It feels like there, I do have a, quite a lot of knit things. I also would be okay even retiring a couple more things that I don't really gravitate towards. And that's, I can totally see from the numbers. So when we look at stats in two weeks, you're going to see this. Like there are a couple I've only grabbed once or twice. And really because I felt guilty because I didn't, I didn't, you know, put them in rotation. Uh, and like one of those is my Claire de Lune. I just, I, I don't like the color on me. It makes me feel like, well, like, I like the sweater. It's a really nice density, but I just never pick it up. And like, that's sad. It's a perfectly good sweater. Somebody could love it. Um, someone with a, a complexion that it would flatter more. And it's not me. And I'd be okay with just like letting it go in the world. I'm certainly not going to rip it out. Uh, you know, things like that. It's like having that perspective. I think it's okay at the rate at which I'm making things that I can let some things go and keep the things I really love. And, uh, I don't want to have a rotating door. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be a factory, but I think I didn't know what I was doing when I was first making garments. There were also, you know, some things I, I was <sighs> excited to test and didn't always think about what I was like, what the what use that was in my closet or like, you know, is it the right color scheme? Is it, you know, some of those things because I just had yarn on hand or whatever. Being more thoughtful this year, hopefully doing less tests, especially for garments, um, will I think really help me. Um, yeah, this year. So anywho, many plans, many things to cast on, never done knitting. And that's great. I want this hobby forever. I want to have a wardrobe that changes and shifts with me, but also some things that I just like have forever. Like how fun is that? If you're like, oh yeah, I knit this 10 years ago and it's still fashionable and like wearable and you know, doesn't look like a pilly mess. That's pretty fun. So yes, I will definitely be casting at least one other sweater on in the very near future. I mean, I'm down in my needles. What what projects did I talk about? One, two, three, four. I have four and two imminently done and a t-shirt that's, you know, 60% of the way. So that's pretty great. I need to be thinking about the plans because part of the hurdle of this is just getting yarn wound. And I don't like to wind yarn when the baby's sleeping because it's a little bit loud. It's not actually, she's got a sound machine in her room. It's fine. It's a mental thing. So I don't love to do it at night. So I need to like plan and I do like while coffee is brewing <laughs> and she's having her breakfast. So anywho, all things to come, things you shall see very shortly. And thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that you had fun listening to my project updates and random rambling. Um, hopefully my yarn refresh inspired you. Uh, and yeah, if you, you know, have any questions now that you can see more yarn, let me know. I'm always happy to answer. Somebody did message me the other week and she was like, what is this yarn? And it was this yarn specifically. Can I this Porter Woolco. She's like, I stare at it every time you podcast. And I was like, oh, that's a good color. And I haven't talked about it since I got it flock. Uh, that is imminently going to be something too, because I'm obsessed. Like, can we just pull it out? This color is so vibrant. Like, I feel like it just would be the funnest thing to wear in a t-shirt right now. So yeah. 
these are the things I think about yarn, more yarn and projects and patterns and all the things. If you have any fun projects you're working on right now, let me know. I am going to cast on my next uh, make 12 though. I'm not going to do a knit along for this one. I will, I might cast it on this week, but if you uh, have anything that you want to make with me, I what I will say is I did bring up doing a flock knit along and yes, flock is still five months, not even, not even five months away, four and a half months away. I definitely think I will do a pretty long test, maybe like a 10 week test, test. I I will do think I want to do a pretty long knit along so everybody can get their yarn, get their things, do whatever. Especially if you're going to travel to flock, you can have your thing done with a reasonable time frame. So I'm thinking more like three months before that'll be our countdown. Um, I, if you have ideas of from my make 12, go back and look at it. I also have most of them are in a, in a grid photo, but I'm kind of leaning towards doing uh like the color tip tea or which I don't know if that's on my make 12 I think it might be uh definitely the stripy turtle tank is though and I also got some yarn to make a slanty um stripes tank from Emily Curtis and so these are all patterns by Emily Curtis who is gently chaotic knits um and she's also in my knitting group but has been traveling for the last nine months eight months uh and so we've not seen her but she will be at flock and that'd be very fun to have a little group photo she could even join us even though I don't think she'll knit along with us because she's doing all her travels um but that's kind of what I'm leaning towards and so you could pick any of these three summer knits that she's got out there um and also like the this you this is a great way to like use minis use up some yarn get something um get something cute on your needles that we would all want to wear together. And that's it. And even if you don't come to flock, you can certainly make a summer pattern with us. And that would be very fun. Uh, but I desperately want to also cast it on and have it to wear this summer. So that's another reason. <laughs> Good enough reason for me. So I now will really truly sign off and stop saying, oh, but another thing. So have a really great whatever day you're watching this, whatever time of day you're watching this. I hope you were working on something fun. Leave me a comment. Always available on Instagram uh, in DMs. And if you would like to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, do all those fun things. I love it. I love the comments. I always comment back and um, I, I just want to know. I want to connect just as much as you guys like hopefully watching me. <laughs> I believe you like watching me that you're here. Um, but I want to know what you're working on. So let me know below and I will talk to you next week. Bye.